Hi, Rob Mason here again. I'm the convener for the Melbourne 2019 Masters National Athletics Championships uh, to be held here in Melbourne. And this is another one in our series of information videos that we're calling Melbourne 2019 RAW uh, to give you a bit of an insight into the planning and the lead up to the championships. Uh, the topic for this video is the program. Okay, uh, always a lot of interest in the program. This year's uh, no different since we uh, put it up on the website there. And uh, thanks for everyone for the feedback and comments and everything that's come in. Probably fair to say that it's been interesting and, and varied. And um, so on, on one hand, perhaps we've got things like terrific, uh, great, uh, good to see the relays on day three, etc. And at the other end of the scale, we've got terrible, um, may not be able to do the 400, um, and things like might need a psychiatric nurse and what have you. So, uh, yes, quite a, a diversity of uh, comment and opinion there. And um, so just a few observations that I'll make before we actually uh, you know, take a bit of a look at the program that is on the website. Um, yeah, so number one would be that just that, that there is a lot of different opinion and diversity amongst uh, the athletes that will be uh, coming to Melbourne and a lot of this I think is reflected in the fact that everyone's got different combinations of events, probably no two people or very few two people would be the same and obviously this makes it extremely difficult to sort of come up with a program that's sort of perfectly suitable for everyone. So. We're never going to have a program like that, but obviously what we're striving to do is come up with a program that's got a balance and, and can work you know, for the majority and I guess is, is the best that we can produce. So what we've been aiming to do is, is come up with what's the right program for Melbourne and I'll be explaining some of more of the factors around that. The second observation I'd make, and I think it's quite a telling one, is the fact that what we're doing at the national championships over four days is something that you take about two weeks to do at a world championships. Okay, there's a lot more people and all that sort of thing, but I guess the, the point that I'm making here is the fact that um, in a world championships they've got the luxury of having that amount of time and therefore they're able to space out the events. And I think this is one of the issues. People are saying, well, the events are sort of packed too tight together. But um, we've only got the four days, you know, if we had an extra day or two days, it could be different. We don't have that. We've got four days. World Championships uh, have, have a couple of weeks. So obviously, just by virtue of that fact, you know, we will have our events packed um, more closely together. Um, but as I said before, um, we work, you know, within that um, constraint. And what we've endeavoured to do is come up with... Uh, what we believe is the you know the right program for Melbourne. Um, as I said before, there's no best program that's going to suit everyone. So, what we'll do now is we'll go to where the program is on the website, and I'll take you through some of the context and background behind um, the setting up of the program for Melbourne. And I'm hoping that'll sort of give people a you know a, a, a sort of a, a broader understanding of some of the factors that go into uh, putting a program together. And it might sort of just sort of help you to, you know, with that understanding to choose your events and uh, work out when you uh, fill out the entry form, uh, entries are about to open, that the, uh, what's the, uh, the right program for you within the context of the, of the broader Melbourne 2019 competition program. Okay, let's go and have a look at the program on the website. Okay, here's the uh, Melbourne 2019 competition program as it currently appears on the website. And so I'm just going to go through uh, some of the background as to how we sort of put it together. More or less, it's um, based on, you know, most of the uh, AMA national championships programs that have run over the years where the events tend to be in, in a certain order uh, over the days and uh, it's a few slight differences and I'll sort of point them out as I go through this. So just a little bit about how I've set this out. I've got things arranged in event category, the walking, sprints, short, long, distance, jumping and throwing. And you can see the uh, progression of events for each category across the four days there. The other thing I've put at the bottom, uh, most of the interest uh, in terms of the feedback was around the uh, the timing of the track events, and so I've put some track notes 
down the bottom here, which gives the approximate times of the uh, various events so that you can actually see the, the, the order of things because there was a few people that weren't too clear on orders thinking that heats were before major finals and as you'll see from this that's not the case. So just uh, a little bit uh, uh, of background then into how we've sort of put this together. So um, one of the main bits of feedback was uh, okay why can't we spread the events out more over the four days and not sort of pack them into the three days as we had. So uh, in answer to that, the main reason is that we've got the pentathlon running on day four. And people might remember back to 2014 when we had the Tasmanian Championships, we actually had the pentathlon as a completely separate day and then all the events on the other three days. So what we're kind of looking to do here isn't anything completely new. So the pentathlon is very uh, intensive in terms of its demands for officials and also its demands for a, a, a requirement for track time. So we've got the 100s and 200s, 800s and 1500s and these can't all be run in blocks because uh, the pentathlon is a staged event uh, where the events have to be run in a particular order. So we've got people starting their 100 metre runs at different points through the day and 200 metres etc. So it, it really does tie the track up pretty heavily, you know, from 8am, you know, through into well into the afternoon. The other thing that we've had to do for Melbourne is uh, due to um, scheduling logistics, we're not able to have the, the road walk on the last day, we had to move that to the second day. So we also have to accommodate the five kilometre track walk on the final day. So if you put all that together, there really isn't any um, time available on the fourth day to schedule any of these uh, other sort of track events from the first three days. But just a little bit further on that, I mean, we've actually had people saying, hey, I, I, want, a, I want the relays to be at the end of day three um, here anyway. I don't want them on the fourth day. So you can just kind of see how everyone's got their different ideas, combinations of events, things that they want to do and how everyone might like the schedule, it's going to be sort of quite different. But one thing I noticed last year, we had the relays at the end of uh, day four in Perth and there wasn't a lot of atmosphere, didn't seem to be as many runners and um, it just did the seem to be sort of like the normal excitement that we have with the relays. So we've got them back here at the end of the uh, the day three. They're still at the end of the sprint program and they'll be following on from the champion sprint. So we hope to have a lot of runners available and a lot of uh, spectators as well. And for that really exciting events that we, you know, we've had in the past with the relays. The other thing about putting them here is that people that are running the pentathlon on day four can also participate in the relays, so they get an opportunity uh, to do that. It does look pretty busy um, for sure on these first three days, but as I said, we've got a number of heats in here so that they probably won't be required in a number of events, um, but it is, it is a packed program and we saw last year pushing the 200s, for example, uh, in Perth into the last day, it wasn't an easy thing. We had the women running 200 finals at eight o'clock in the morning, and it just underscores the point that I've already said that the pentathlon really is dominating um, the track, you know, on, on this fourth day, and there really isn't a lot of room. I did look back, uh, you know, beyond Perth last year, and there in Adelaide and Perth, you know, we had some long hurdles and things tacked into the last into the last day, but. Um, you know, for just one event, does that really sort of unload things here that much? Probably not. Um, and I guess another point too, with this uh, sprint program, distance running program being completed in the three days, for those that aren't doing pentathlons or other throwing and things like that, they, you know, they can do their championships in, in three days. So there's a lot of pros and cons in all of this. And as I've said, different uh, combinations will work for different people. But I guess what I've been trying to do here is just sort of uh, give a bit of background as to sort of why this program is, is the right one, you know, for Melbourne in 2019. And I can only go back to my opening remarks where, you know, uh, a world championships done in two weeks 
we've only got the, the three to four days, you know, to do our events. So it's just going to be that the gaps between the events aren't that long. Even if you added another day, it'd be good, but it'll still be, uh, there'll, there'll still be sort of uh, not massive gaps between a lot of the events, you know, for people that are sort of really heavy sort of competitors and want to compete in uh, as many events as possible. So I guess as a bit of a, a funny sidelight, it does take me back to when we used to do the, the high school sports all in one afternoon. I think we used to do discus, long jump, 7,500, 200, 400 and relay. And we did all that in an afternoon. So um, this program and all the AMA programs that we've had are, are much more comfortable by that. I remember, I think, part of our preparation for the 400 was doing the 200 four and throwing up in the bushes and then we were ready to go for the 400. So hopefully you'll be able to be prepared, uh, pick your events like you would have done before and everything like that and sort of be ready to go. Just before I jump off things around the program, I'll just put a little bit of a plug for our social program. Um, we've got a, uh, a number of uh, social events that we've planned. So we've actually got this uh, social program together with the competition program. We'll be kicking off with a meet and greet on Anzac um, evening before the events. And then on the next three evenings, we'll be having an after match, what we're calling it after the event, where the chance for people to catch up. And our main event, of course, is the Athletes and Friends Dinner Party uh, this year. That's uh, going to be down there in St Kilda. And uh, that's our sort of flagship event. And you get tickets for that through your entry. Uh, and also just to highlight that at the dinner party and at the first after match, uh, our special guest will be Ralph DeBell, Australia's last male track gold medalist in the Olympics, Mexico 1968. He'll be along. He's written a book and uh, people will be able to meet him have a bit of a chat and also if they want to um, buy his books, that's something else to look forward to. So uh, thanks for uh, viewing this video uh, on the uh, program for Melbourne 2019 and you can look forward to uh, other videos as they come out over the next few weeks. Thanks very much.